Welcome to another episode of On Shape with Mr. Keller. Today we're going to learn how to make this basic multi-view drawing using our part. Multi-view refers to having multiple views from different angles of the same part. So here's our part. This is our initials that we made. And this view here in the corner is called the isometric view because you can see three sides of it equally. You can see the front, the top side, and the right side of this. Now, here is the front view, as if we were looking straight at it. So we don't see any depth. It's a 2D view or an orthographic view because we're looking straight at it. We can't see the sides or the back. This, If we look at the object straight down from the top, it looks like this. This is called the top view here above the front. And if we go to the right of the front view, this would be the right side view. So again, front view, top view, right view, isometric view. And then we're going to add dimensions. This is the width because it goes from left to right of the object. This is the height because it goes from the top to the bottom of the object. And this is the depth because it goes from the front edge to the back edge of the object. And then we have a little center mark because we have arcs. We're going to show you how to do that as well. And the dotted lines are hidden lines because they are edges that are behind the surface. So if I'm looking straight from the top, I don't see these edges that are here underneath the object. They're hidden. Likewise, if I look from the right side, these dotted lines are edges that we can't see behind this surface that's right here. It refers to these edges. So let's go ahead and make our multi-view drawing. So to do that, we're going to go here to the plus down at the bottom next to your tabs and insert new element and create drawing. Now, since our part was made in millimeters, we want a template that uses millimeters. So ANSI A, that's the stand, ANSI is a standard. A is the size. It's a typical 8.5 by 11 sheet on its turn sideways into port, into uh, landscape. And MM refers to millimeters. So we want ANSI A MM. So select that and click OK. So here's our blank sheet. And the first thing it says, which part do you want to use? So I want to use, mine pops up right here. If you had other parts, you would select whichever one you wanted. So I want part one. And then it says, OK, go ahead. The view orientation is front. Go ahead and place your front view. So move it somewhere down in the left corner, bottom left corner, not all the way down here. You'll see why shortly, somewhere over here. Click to place. And then it says, which projected view do you want to make? So I'm just going to move up. If I move my mouse up above it, that's the top view. If I went to the right, that would be the right side view. And if I went in the corner, that would be the isometric view. So I'm just going to do the top view right there. And then notice my cursor still is that box with the little hairs, the crosshair sticking out. So I can place another projected view. If you look up here, projected view is still selected. So I click on my front, and then I move my mouse to whichever view I want. So to the right is the right view. And then I need, which view do I need that's missing? Yep, you guessed it, isometric view. So I click on my front and move it to the upper right so that the part doesn't overlap any of my borders, and click to place. And now I've got my four basic views on here. So I can press the Escape key on my keyboard. And that brings me back to my mouse. So now I'm going to add hidden lines. So I'm going to right click on my top view, show hidden lines. And there's not going to be any hidden lines on the front view because there's nothing sticking out behind it. So on my right view, I'm going to enable my hidden lines also. And then on my isometric view, I want it to be shaded or to have color. So I'm going to right click on that and show shaded view. And now it shows up in color. And last thing I need to add is a center mark. Anytime you have circles or arcs, they need center marks. So I'm going to click up here. It looks like a circle with a plus in my toolbar. 
click on center mark and then hover over any of the arcs these two arcs both share the same center down here on my J so it doesn't matter which one I click and you can see the little plus pop up and now I can press escape to cancel out of that and now I need to add dimensions so I'm gonna go up here to the toolbar again and if I move to the right from the projected views eventually I come across dimension shortcut for that is D so click on dimension and to place a dimension you need to click one side and the other side of some the thing you want to measure so I want the overall width so I'm going to click on the furthest left part place on my part and then click on the furthest right place on my part and then move my dimension up make sure the number is in the center of the arrows and click to place that's the width now I want the height so I want the very bottom I'm going to do it on my right side view. I could do it on my front view. I'm going to do it on my right view. So it just for a difference. So I click on the very bottom edge and the very top edge, or if there was a point, the very top point. Click. And now see how it measures the distance between those two edges and put my number in the center between the arrows and click to place. And now I need depth. And I'm going to put it on the top view. I could put it here from front to back on the right side but I'm going to do it on the top just to have it on a different view so I click on a front edge or a front point doesn't really matter in our case click now I'm measuring the distance between those two and put the number in the center between the arrows and click there we go I like I said you could have you could put the height here between these Notice it's the same as the one I already placed. I don't need to put a duplicate. That's pointless. So, and there we go. There is your basic multi-view drawing with four views with width, height, depth, and isometric view shaded and hidden lines. And a center mark for your circle. If you have more circles, you need more center marks.